understanding price action. This is likely going to be, you know, the most basic, but the most important lesson that we've had thus far in this course. So I really hope you guys pay attention to this video and just take home the bigger picture of what we're going to jump into here. You know, I nailed it. I chose the perfect stock. You know, I nailed that short move in finance. You know, I took the perfect entry. Why isn't my stock trading higher? You know, those are things that are said by pretty much every misunderstood trader ever. In order to succeed as a trader, especially as an independent shorter term trader, again, guys, it's not so much about the setups, the signals and all, you know, the flashy stuff that people like to focus on. It starts first and foremost with an understanding of the game and how it works. We need to truly understand money flow in the market in order to build, you know, the foundation of a successful trader. So let's talk a little bit about how institutional money moves through our market. You know, the hedge funds and mutual funds. Let's talk about how they, you know, flush their capital and how it affects us as individual traders. You know, so here's how money flows in the market. It starts with the indexes and it works its way down. You know, so much like a pack of wolves, wherever the leader goes, goes the pack. In our market, guys, you know, we can look at the spy as the leader. You know, so the spy, you know, when you hear people talk about the market, you know, how's our market doing? How's the market? They're talking about the S&P 500. And the SPY is simply an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So as many of you know, the S&P 500 is our market index, and it's comprised of the top 500 stocks in our market. You know, so what does that mean? You know, what the heck is the SPY? It's a basket of stocks. You know, we've talked a lot about XLK, XLF, XLE, the individual sector ETFs. Well, the S&P 500 is like the ETF for our entire market. Links up with the S&P 500, and it's important to understand how the SPY is just simply a basket of stocks. You know, this means that rather than, you know, taking ownership or the SPY being, you know, one individual company, rather, it's a big basket of all kinds of different stocks. You know, in the case of the, the SPY, you know, it's a basket of stocks that are in the S&P 500, those 500 names. So... Very important to understand, guys, that when you invest in the SPY, or rather, when hedge funds and mutual funds invest in the SPY, they're not taking ownership of one company. You know, SPY is not a company itself. Rather, because it's a basket, when they invest in the SPY, they're taking ownership in all of the stocks that make up that basket. Now, some stocks, they make up a bigger percentage of the basket, but nonetheless, when big money comes in and out of the SPY, it is truly going, you know, in and out by default of those big 500 names. You know, so this big circle right here can represent the S&P 500. It's one big basket, and it's got all kinds of different names that, you know, that make it. You've got energy names, tech names, you know, you've got Caterpillar, Apple, banking names, airlines. You've got all kinds of different sectors and stocks in the S&P 500, you know, that is what makes up this basket. Here's where this all kind of, you know, ties together. In today's market, most big money gets invested, you know, in these baskets, in these indexes, rather than the individual names. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, obviously, of course, hedge funds and mutual funds are still putting client capital into individual names. However, with, you know, the introduction of ETFs in the past, it's kind of changed how, you know, the financial management world works. A lot more big money is just simply moving in and out of these baskets rather than the individual names. So this means that, you know, now, likely more than ever, individual stocks are really at the mercy of, you know, not only their individual sector ETF, but also at the mercy of the overall picture the S&P 500. Because this is a basket made up of different stocks, when the SPY gets bought aggressively, the names in this basket are going to get bought aggressively too by default. You know, let's say I'm a hedge fund and I buy $1 billion worth of the SPY. 
what's really happening with my billion dollars is that it's going out and depending on, you know, how much weight they have in this basket, you know, my billion dollars is going to me some Amazon. You know, it's getting me a little bit of JP Morgan, a little bit of O'Reilly, you know, Best Buy, Verizon, Caterpillar, Google, Aflac. What I invest in the spy is getting divvied out between all the individual names in that basket. And the same thing, guys, like recently when the market gets sold off, when the S&P 500, when the SPY gets sold off, the names in that basket are sold off aggressively as well. And so what this means for us is that we have to truly understand and respect the fashion in which money flows in our market, where it starts, and the domino effect that can take place. One of the major and most you know, easily avoidable reasons that most traders take substantial damage is because of a lack of understanding and a lack of respect of this detail. It really does, like truly, it blows my mind how many traders ignore the bigger picture. You know, how many traders just don't respect the fact that, you know, their individual pick, the individual stock that you choose to trade likely has no chance of moving in your desired direction if the market is moving in the opposite direction. And again, you know, on the flip side, when you can take a trade in an individual stock that is supported by what's going on in the S&P 500, you know, supported by the direction of the bigger picture, you know, those are the most profitable, consistent, and enjoyable trades. Looking at this picture right here, guys, it kind of ties everything together. It all starts right here in the S&P 500. Understand that it starts here, and what goes on here has a direct impact on all the individual sectors. What happens in the S&P 500 is going to have an impact on the financial sector, and the energy sector, and the financial sector again, apparently, in transportation, in tech, healthcare, materials, industrials. Regardless of the individual sector you're looking at, it oftentimes is likely going to be at the mercy of this big, big basket. You know, we talk a lot about trading, you know, supply and demand and following, you know, the money into these individual sectors, but we got to take an even further step back and understand that, you know what, whatever's going on in that financial basket, you know, what, whatever's going on in XLF is really going to be dictated by what's going on in here. You know, there are 500 names in here. Many of those 500 names are the exact same stocks that make up the financial basket. Inside of the S&P basket, you have Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, etc., etc. Those names are in this basket, and they're also a part of their individual financial basket as well. Here is the domino effect, guys. When this big boy right here takes damage, anything inside of that is taking damage as well. So when the S&P 500 is getting sold off, it means that a lot of financial stocks are getting sold off. That means that the financial basket is also directly, you know, correlated to what's going on here. You know, when do technology stocks make a good move? When this big basket that represents our entire market makes a big move. Why? Because all the names that make up the technology basket, they take up a portion of the SPY as well. At the end of the day, whatever goes on in your individual stock or in the individual sector that you're monitoring is always going to be tied to what's going on in our market. And again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, guys, but it has nothing to do with your pick. The individual stock you choose to trade is likely going to be, you know, dependent on the overall market condition. The results of your trade aren't going to so much be, you know, dictated by the one stock you pick, rather, are you nailing the direction of the market? We as short-term traders profit, when we profit rather, it has nothing to do with that particular stock, and it's usually just the timing of when we bought that individual stock. Now let's look at a few charts here and kind of tie this together. So what I want to talk about, guys, is when the market started to really kind of free fall here on the 10th of October. So this is the S&P 500. What did we just discuss? 
we discussed how it's kind of that domino effect. Because the spy is made up of all those individual names, whatever is happening here by default is affecting those names inside that basket. So when the market rolled over and just whipped to the downside here on the 10th, you know, we want to go take a look at what happened to the technology sector. Well, on the 10th of October, the technology sector, um, yeah, 10th of October, the tech sector really started to roll over on big volume as well. You know, how about the financial sector? You know, what happened that day? You know, if you look at the 10th of October for the financial sector, it really rolled over as well. So, you know, take a step back and, and think about that. The financial sector and the technology sector are two totally different things. All those names are in completely different lines of business. However, on the 10th of October, both of those sectors started to roll over to the downside. Let's take a look at energy. That's an entirely, you know, separate sector on its own. You know, what happened on the 10th of October? It started to roll over on big volume as well. You know, how about, um, you know, healthcare? You know, what happened to healthcare on the 10th of October? Looks like the healthcare sector really started to roll over on big volume on the 10th of October as well. Now ask yourself, guys, again, Here's how the average person looks at the market. Oh, there must have been bad news in finance today. You know, there must have been bad news in technology today. You know, understand, guys, that there wasn't bad news on the 10th of October that made the healthcare sector take a hit. There wasn't bad news out of the financial sector on October 10th that made it take a big hit. There was no negative news coming out of the energy sector that made it take a big hit. And the same thing with technology. You know, there wasn't bad news or some negative catalyst coming out of technology. So on the 10th of October, and pretty much since then, why did all those individual sectors, which are made up of stocks doing completely different things in their own respective line of business, take damage? The reason being is that the basket, the big picture, the leader of that wolf pack, took a hit on the 10th. And just like we talked about, guys, it's that domino effect. What happens here, good or bad, trickles down to the individual groups. And again, why? Because what is in this S&P 500 is in those names as well. It's all one big basket that is directly you know, attached to each other. So we go back to those charts and this is important stuff to understand as a short-term trader. The reason that everything started to fall on the 10th was because the basket itself, our market, the S&P 500, the controller of everything, started to trade to the downside. It's important to understand this because your average trader doesn't pay attention to this, doesn't respect this, and they're going to try to buy on this day right here. And they're trying to buy in here, you know, and they're trying to buy in here, you know, and they're trying to buy yesterday. Yesterday is another good example. You know, did we get bad news out of the technology sector yesterday? No, but, you know, it had a really nasty day. You know, how about finance? Was there some huge negative financial catalyst? No, but they took a hell of a hit yesterday. You know, how about biotech? Here's a random one. No bad news in biotech, but you know it took a big hit the other day. How about healthcare yesterday? How'd healthcare do? Really bad day for healthcare. There was no negative news in any of those individual groups, guys. And to break it down to the individual stock basis now to go even lower, there wasn't bad news in Apple yesterday, but Apple was down 4%. There wasn't bad news in Amazon yesterday, but Amazon was down almost 5.5%. We didn't get bad news out of Netflix, but what happened to Netflix? Down almost 5%. The average trader gets wrapped up in the individual stock and the chart of their pick, and that is all they focus on. 
You have a lot of people right now who have blown up their accounts trying to catch the bounce on the 10th or trying to buy Netflix you know, every day, trying to catch the dip as it continues to trade lower and lower. The reality is, guys, is that everything is going to be dictated by the direction of the market. You know when the best time for you to go long is? When the market is trending to the upside. The best time for you to go short is when the market is going to the downside. Up until this week, stocks had made a really nice move to the upside for the past five or six sessions. And again, we can look at something like an Apple. Was there good news in Apple that caused this little bounce? Nope. Was there any kind of good news in Amazon to cause this big bounce? No. How about Google? Did we get some press release or you know some kind of earnings report? No, but Google traded higher. You know, how about uh, the financial group? Did we get good news in finance last week, you know, to make it kind of pop? No. Um, how about biotech? You know, was there good news in the biotech world? No, but, you know, biotech bounced. Why did everything bounce across the board starting last week? You guessed it, guys, because the big picture, the market bounced. The same thing that the same reason that every stock trended higher during this whole period right here is the same reason that everything fell yesterday. It starts right here. Accept and understand that as an individual trader, you in your entire lifetime will never, ever, ever come close to having enough capital to make these big name stocks move on your own. With that being said, we have to follow the big money. $1.7 billion was sold out of the S&P 500 yesterday. Don't be the idiot who thinks that their $500 account is enough to step in front of this and go long. It all starts with the bigger picture. So to tie everything together, guys, what I suggest now is that you got to use these tools before every given trade you take so we want to make sure the trades we're taking are you know appropriate for the environment and are supported by the overall market so if you guys log into the focus trade site and you head over to the members area these trading tools right here guys are going to become your best friend and this pre-trade checklist right here is incredibly helpful Putting aside, you know, how much profit this checklist could probably help you bring in this year, it's going to help you avoid taking just unreal damage that's unnecessary. So we pull up this document over here. This is our pre-trade checklist, guys. These are three questions you need to ask yourself before taking any trade. Now, the first question is, is the overall market supportive of this trade? Based upon what we just talked about for the last 20 minutes, we shouldn't be trying to go long a stock when the overall market is going to the downside. You know, and even further, because what happens in the market is going to have an effect on that sector, we really shouldn't be trying to go against the direction of that sector either. A good example would be yesterday. Let's say that yesterday we're thinking about going long Goldman Sachs. Here's how the average trader operates. They, Market opens, they stare at Goldman Sachs, and they look at nothing else. And they pull some, you know, half-assed guess, okay, this is a good opportunity to buy. But with the understanding that we need to be aligned to the overall direction of the market, the checklist would have kept you out of some losing trades yesterday. You know, you would have looked at the SPY before buying Goldman Sachs and say, and well, the whole market is rolling over right now. You know, why am I going to try to go long? The mothership is taking a beating. You know, not only that, but the individual group that my stock pick belongs to, finance, is getting its ass kicked as well. In a matter of seconds, that trade is a no-go. There's no wind at your back. There's no edge in that trade. You can make these decisions and begin to really, you know, see awesome increases in your trading results when you take this step back and just understand that it all starts with the bigger picture of the S&P 500. It oftentimes has nothing to do with your individual pick. Here's the reality. 
when the market started to trend higher here on the 21st, you could have bought any technology stock. It has nothing to do with your pick. It's about timing your pick with movement in the market. Because look at this. When the market started to move here on the 26th, it could have been Facebook. And you would have profited. You could have bought Apple. And you would have profited. You could have bought Amazon. You could have bought Google. You could have bought Apple, NVIDIA. You name it, guys. You could have gone long pretty much any major stock during this period and made money. Was there good news out of all these individual stocks? Was there earnings catalyst? Was there some awesome event taking place? No. The reason that you could have made money going long pretty much any stock during this period is that the basket, the thing that carries the load and leads the way, was moving higher itself. So hopefully this makes sense, guys, in terms of how money flows in the market. And when you wrap your mind around this, it makes your job as a trader a little bit clearer. It isn't so much about the stock you choose, rather when you choose to buy it. So I hope this makes sense, guys. I hope maybe it kind of drives home the bigger picture of the market. And it's something to really think about, you know, this weekend as we head into a new week of trading.